Welcome everyone. My name is Tiffany of the Tipsy Artist and we're going live today to teach you how to paint this beautiful spring crate of spring flowers. So I've got my line art showing here and my graphite transfer paper in place and then we're working on an 8x10 canvas today. So a few little helpful hints here. I only uh, tape up here at the top and then that way I can lift up during the process and actually check my work as I go. So I started a little bit, but we're going to work through that process today during the class. So that is very helpful. And then also we've got a couple of options with our traceable on which size of canvas we can use. So either 8x10 or 11x14. If it's on 11x14, you can just kind of float it right in the center and then tape right in the center of your canvas. If it's on the 8x10, got a little tight on the size so it just fits perfectly on there so what I did do is I took my scissors and I trimmed it right at the line edge line of the crate and I lined that up at the very base here of the canvas Let me move that up a little bit so you can see so basically when I pull it straight down this base of the crate will actually line up with the end of the canvas. So that's going to fit perfectly on there and that'll be a nice fit. And then this will go all the way up to the top. So it'll really fill the entire space there of the canvas for you. All right, so we're going to continue doing our trace. And we have a lovely paint kit that comes with this. So it has all the supplies that you need, everything that you need to get it done. That's everything you need is at tipsyartist.com and just want to say hello to everybody welcome if you have any questions or comments please please leave those below and i'll get back with you right after the class but again hello to everybody we're so glad you're here we're in our sunroom here and it's a beautiful day all right so let me lift up and check i've got my butterfly done and one of my roses and i usually just do the outside of the rose I mean, you can do a little bit of this detail just to kind of give it a reference for what it is. But we're going to be painting over that. So the insides of the roses are not as crucial. But basically every single place that you see a line, they'll just work on over the top. Just follow those lines, let them be your guide. And very simple. Just a little spiral. And if some of it goes off the canvas, like it is here, not a big deal. We always make the trace to where it has enough of an excess design to be able to fill the space beautifully, and some of it will actually run off the edge, and that's all right. And you can see with your pencil, you'll, there'll be a little bit of that graphite shimmer to it to where you can see where you've been. But again, we do recommend doing a constant lift like this just to kind of make sure, especially when you get towards the very end and you want to make sure you have all of that detail in before you actually completely remove your line art. Because once you remove it, there's not a whole lot of return on going back to using that transfer paper with this line art because it's just so challenging to be able to line it up. So you can just kind of keep it pressed and in the same position here.
have all this really big sunflower in the middle. Okay, we've got a great start. This is our old wooden crate. The nail holes there. All the way to the base. And then this is going to be a little inset here. To, that's where we will put in our monogram letter. And in your kit, you'll actually have an entire alphabet to use to go ahead and do a trace. I'm omitting that today since. I'll just freehand mine on. I'll probably just do the letter A for simplicity. You can also write a word in there too if you want. Something like joy would actually fit or love I think might be able to fit in there too. Yeah, love would actually be a nice fit, which I may do that today since it's more universal for everyone. See how easy this is, just following the lines. All right, let's do a check, make sure we get all our line work in. So we've got our entire crate here, I think. Oops, I missed the line. See, that's why it's important to lift up and check. So I think we are good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lift off. Did a lot of tape today. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. All right. Um, and normally, let me tell you too that the kit does come with a permanent marker, and sometimes I definitely suggest doing that, especially if you're going to do a background color in here, then you want all this trace to bleed through. Today, I'm actually going to leave the white of the canvas as the white background and so I'm going to omit that part of the process and just keep my lovely light pencil drawing here to get my image back out in front. Alright, so we're going to just basically start with the lightest colors first. I've got my little family of brushes nearby, my water for cleaning. Let's talk about a little family here. We have Mama. She's just a little tack on brush, a little flat tack on brush. And then we've got little buddy and then little bit and then we have our paints 
mine are a little bit used your kit of course will be brand new lovely full so I'm trying to use up what I've got here okay so again starting with the lightest colors and I've got a bunch of titanium white already lined up for myself so let's go ahead and start with those sunflowers first so here we go with some primary yellow Get a nice pea sized amount of that over there it's a big pea isn't it okay and then let's do a little bit of our cadmium yellow. Um, yes, we're just going to do the light parts of that so far. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my, let's start with our little buddy here. So let's do a little touch of my white. touch of white, a little touch of primary yellow. Let's warm it up with some of that cadmium. And we're just going to do a wash of that over the top here. And my center will be darker, but I'm going to work that in more towards the end. So we're just getting the light sections of the painting done first. You. That's my sweet puppy dog, Miss Ira. She had a big old sneeze. All right, let's just go ahead and fill that all in just for evenness and consistency with the design. All right, so that's the first yellow flower. Then I have a few more over here that I'll fill in. So again, still working with that primary yellow, a little bit of cadmium yellow. So we're just getting that first layer of color into the design here. So that's all of our yellow, very nice, very pretty. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Let's go ahead and work in some of those beautiful pinks with our roses. So we're going to use some primary magenta. A little dollop of that. I'm gonna go ahead and shift over to the mama brush. We'll grab a little touch of that white, mix that in with our primary magenta. Go ahead and sweep that into those circular shapes here for our roses.
got a few that are just kind of doing a little bit of a peekaboo in through here. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of detail work over the tops of the roses now while it's still wet. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little bit brush and some of that white. I'm just going to dip right into it and then just kind of lightly, very gently, using the side of the brush, just kind of lay down almost what feels like little half circles and take that all the way around the shape of the rose. Basically just kind of work in towards the center. Very light hand, feel like you just kind of barely graze the top of the canvas. Little half circles. We're going to go into some of that darker shade. I'm just going to push into that primary magenta a little bit. See how it's right there on the tip of the brush? We're going to do like what feels like a little tiny comma and then lift off with a light hand. It's that little center shadow of the rose. And I'm going to just echo the same little stroke we did with some of the darkness here of that darker shade of primary magenta and just do those same little half circles. I push that down with a little bit of a shaky hand. It's actually kind of good. It works in your favor. Kind of wiggle your hand a little bit and just barely touch down. Just very delicate. And there's not that much of this. And rinse out. And let's get to work with some playful violet. So let's go ahead and take our violet color here. This will look kind of black to begin with. Nice dollop of that. Let's go ahead and take our little bit brush again. Pull in some white and a little bit of white with that really makes that pop into a beautiful color there. It's just a beautiful violet purple. And I'm going to go ahead and place that into our sweet little butterflies here. And then 
this one. Kind of working back and forth with a little bit of that pure purple, a pure violet, and then some of the white mixed back in. Just some of that blending back and forth between the lavender and the pure violet. A lot of paint on the brush, a lot of texture, light hand, letting a lot of that just rest right on the surface area. All right, very lovely. Let's go ahead and rinse out. And again, we're doing all of our lights first. So the next thing I'll work into will be some of those beautiful greens. So let's kind of shift our palette here a little bit and let's gather some green. So we've got some cadmium green here. Some bright yellow green. Some Viridian, which is very much like a teal color. And I'm going to put a touch of our primary cyan blue nearby too, so that we can mix up a little bit of turquoise, which is also quite beautiful and a nice complementary shade to our greens. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our mama brush again. Let's grab some white and some viridian. Look at that to begin with. I'm going to start to work on this crate a little bit, but I need this crate to look just slightly distressed, so I'm going to add little shades of gray. So this is my Mars Black. Let's do a little pea size amount of that. Barely touch into that black. See how that looks? That's really nice. We're going to add a little touch of that in there too. Let's grab a little bit of water. Use the mama brush more the flat side. Again, it is a beautiful day in my sunroom in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Lovely day. We have birds out in the garden. And hello to everybody out there joining us. I hope you're having a gorgeous day. It's another little plank of wood here connecting in the vertical section. Just getting those solid coats in the background.
having a little bit of water with this mix makes it just kind of easier to flow onto the surface area. These are all going to be green in here, so I'm just doing a light little overpaint. Got a little bit of water in the mix. It almost has more of like a watercolor feel to it sometimes. I can also continue to see my pencil trace through it. We'll touch back into that over the surface. So we've got a great start on that. Let's go ahead and rinse out. And then we want to do a little bit of a green wash all throughout here too to help fill in that space. Um, so let's go ahead and take a little mix of our bright yellow green. We want it to be quite a bit lighter though. A little touch of our cadmium, a little touch of white, and a little bit of water to help that consistency be a bit more transparent. And so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fill this in here. And you can see that our graphite trace is just bleeding right through. We'll be able to still see that and pick up the design work that needs to be done with the leaves that come in over the top. I kind of do a little bit of a, as I come towards the end of the bouquet, I want to do, not, I don't want to do a harsh line of ending, but maybe just a little bit of a tap. right up to that butterfly. Gonna fill all this in. Go right to a line there. That will provide a nice base. And then we'll continue on with our design over the top. Let's go ahead and rinse out. All right, we're gonna work back now with our little bit brush and some darker greens. So we'll be working with some of our cadmium green here and our viridian. You know what? There's a little touch of turquoise nearby would be awesome. We can mix up some of that. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of viridian, and a little bit of white. About three equal parts. So I've got my turquoise nearby. So that'll be fun to play with and dip into. my viridian and my cadmium green. And I'm going to go ahead and look into these little flowers here. I'm sorry, leaves. Leaves, those are leaves. There we go. Pretty. Let's keep working this in. You can also add just a teeny amount of black to that too. That'll give it like a sage color. Got a little bit of white. A little bit of black, a little bit of white, a little bit of cadmium green, a bit of bright yellow green.
See, it kind of cools off that green a little bit, but it's not so, so bright. So we'll have little bits of different shades. There's all different kinds of shades of our little leaves that'll pop through here. And we still see our little trace happening, so we'll just work into that. I'm gonna brighten that up a little bit more of that bright yellow green. Let's grab it more white. All the way around. again. We have this lighter shade of green that we did those and we'll come back in with a little bit more of a darker shade. Grab some of that turquoise and start to play with that too. That'll be fun. A little mix of that. Again, this is our turquoise, and so little tiny leaves in here. Just kind of working those over the little trace that we have. And then the basic stroke on it is also like a little parentheses and a little parentheses, and it just closes off. on the ends of these.
back to that sage, which is our white, our bright yellow green. A little touch of black. Ooh, that went way dark, didn't it? I got way too much black on accident. So let's mix back in more bright yellow green and more white. Sometimes that can be a bit challenging to recover from. Black is very powerful. Right. Let's go and twirl out there. A little loops, little stem. Little parentheses, parentheses, connect those cute little leaves there. of those little leaves in there. starting to get some really nice fullness in there. I'm going to step back and work into our flowers a little bit more too. So I've got a few little roses in here that I'll, I'll work in. A little bit of white over the top. Little half circles. I'll work that around the shape. And we'll touch into a little bit of that primary magenta. A little comma right in the center. I'll take that around in those little wiggly half circles for the comma. A little, little shadow in the middle of the rose. Now we'll do a few more little um, flowers in here that just kind of, we'll do a little, little technique where we just land on the side of the brush. So I'm going to gather my white and add it to this violet here. Put a lot of paint on the end of the brush. And then we'll basically just do a little, I think that was a little too much little touches of it. So we're going to fill our bouquet with some more of this. Right in the center. So again, little pushes of this, pushes and pulls. A little, almost like making the leaf shape, it's the same petal shape there, but a little like parentheses, parentheses, and then just connect the two, and I just do little touches of this throughout the center. So it's looking very lovely and full in there. And then I want to make some little delicate flowers that come out of the bouquet. So I'm going to do like a darker little viridian here with the black. And I'll just 
make a little line that kind of comes out. Put a few of these. And then off of that, I'm going to touch into the primary magenta. Let's gather a little bit of white there with that too. And then off to the side, I'll do little touches. I make it come out on a diagonal to each side. It's just more of a little delicate flowering stem that comes outside of the bouquet. So vary that side to side. Change your direction. See, I switch in a diagonal, but to each side there. Just do a little press on the side of the brush. And we can do, you know, a few little presses of this to the same color. Set that same little flower, just kind of doing a little peekaboo inside of our bouquet here. And let's rinse out. All right, now we're going to start getting into the darker shadows. So I'm going to take my same little bit brush, let's go into that black right in the center there. There's our black. Got a little bit of water on the end too, just to help make that black very fluid, easy to flow on top of the canvas. And a little antenna. Just come in here and do the center of this little butterfly. Little antenna. And I need to mix up a little bit of some brown. So I rinse out here, and that's it off to the side. Let's gather some cadmium orange. Let's do, where do I want this? Let's do it right here. As you can see. Let's do some more Mars black. This will make our brown. A mix of the Mars black and the cadmium orange. The more orange you add, the lighter the brown. Using my little bit brush here, I'm going to go ahead and work this into the center of the sunflower. Having a little bit of water, making it easier to move around. take the black and just kind of dot the black down into the brown as well. Kind of tap it in there. A little bit of texture. Oh, beautiful. And I'm going to rinse out again. I'm going to go back to just kind of get that excess water out of there. But we're going to go back to that brown, I'm going to grab a little bit of that water and just kind of place it into that brown. Okay. Let's twirl it out. And then we're going to go ahead and accentuate very gently our little sunflower petals. Yeah. 
added there. Take this brush and kind of lift up. As I always say, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. I'm going to kind of push into this with another clean mama brush here. It's a little bit moist. I'm using that as a nice little shadow. Kind of softly blends into it and picks it up. got that brown and I'm going to work this into the center here. And the same thing here on these other little flowers. And then with a little bit more water, a little bit more water down, then I'll do the same thing. I'll just kind of accentuate the outside. A sketch to it. Nice. Okay. And then we're going to come back in a little bit of black, a little bit of brown. And we're going to just work right around the edge here of our crate. little nail holes. Just accentuating those little leaves a little bit more. water spot. So I just kind of picked it up with a nearby brush and then lift it off. That is the beauty of working flat. You can easily recover from those. And if you've got a little paper towel, you can also do a little lift. Then a little center line through the leaves. wire. can't see all the wires that I'm surrounded by, so um, technical age was here. Right, so I've got that watered down brown again. I'm going to just around this. I'm actually going to switch brushes here. Go to my little buddy. 
and do a firm press into that brown. A little bit of water, maybe a little bit of black too. Nice thin edge. And then I'm going to take this all the way across. looking really good. I'm going to do some little dots of the black here. So I'm going to take the end of the brush. This is a neat little trick. I'm going to take it into the end of the black and we're just going to dab down and push that into those little nail holes. Just a real fun, easy, precise way to do that. And then we're about to get to the part where we're going to line this out and do either a word or a monogram. That's optional for y'all. And if you have a really shaky hand, of course your kit comes with a permanent marker, so you can always just do all of that with the permanent marker. That's really easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with just a little bit of water and the black paint and my little bit brush. I make sure that I kind of twirl out the head of the brush into the paint that will give my brush a nice fine point. If you've got that peekaboo white canvas coming through, I add a little tiny amount of water to that paint that will help fill in those little holes there. If the canvas is very porous, so it'll just fill that right up. You don't want too much water, it'll make a big water spot. So you have to just kind of spin it out in the brush a little bit. Kind of takes some time to get used to it. You can do some practice runs with your brush and pressure and how much water before you actually go to the canvas. If it makes you a little bit nervous, which is probably a good idea. Because even people who've been painting a while will sometimes just get too much water in the end of the brush and then it can make kind of a mess. But remember, it's easy to lift off with just a paper towel nearby or a moist brush nearby. Just pick it up with the moist brush. It just lifts right off. One more line here. And then we'll do our letter in the center. So I'll just place that there. And there it is. Ta-da! We are all done. 
All right, so you can sign your masterpiece if you would like after it sets up and dries. And then all the supplies that you need for this project are on our website at tipsyartist.com. And I just want to thank you again so very much for joining us. Had a blast with you all today. And going to be painting a lot this week, so I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Toodles. Love you all. Bye.